wanted to talk a bit more about permissions because being able to share data within the Abacus Alliance is really what it's all about because if we don't get consumer permission to share data, there's not going to be an alliance. So it's quite fundamental. So when we're looking at a customer, we, through the shared information, know quite a lot about them. And it's the pieces of information that we know that enables us to make sure that the targeting is absolutely right for them. It's as much about not sending mail as it is sending mail, the right mail and the right communication. Um, so it's a real benefit to the consumer. The more that we understand, the more we can target the right things to the right people and make sure they don't get the wrong things. But if you don't get permission from them to share those pieces of data, suddenly the picture looks less clear and we have a lot less information. And the knock-on effect is they might get communications that they might not want because we just don't have enough information. So it's really important to get their permission. So as Christine said, uh, if you are sending somebody an email or an SMS or you're contacting them by phone, you have to call upon consent and you have to make sure that the consumer is given the opportunity to opt in. Now that's the same under the existing regulation. Nothing changes there, so that just carries on under the data protection regulation. But direct mail is recognised as a legitimate business interest, which means that you can communicate with them because it's in business interest and the consumer's interest that you do have a relationship, but you need to give them the opportunity to opt out. And again, that's the same as it is right now. So nothing really changes. As I said, the regulation allows opt out for direct mail. The existing rules uh, for post, not so sure about telephone, um, remain the same for first and third party mailing if using legitimate interest. This is what we believe at the moment. So those of you that were um, at the event in October, uh, you'll remember that James Milligan, the DMA lawyer, uh, came and spoke for us. What we're very pleased about in the regulation is that direct marketing is being, is being explicitly recognised as a legitimate interest in the regulation. So that means that, that they recognise that it's in the interests of business to actually be able to um, send out marketing material um, to, their, to, their, to, to their customers. So for those of you who are operating by mail, it will end up exactly the same thing as it is now. You will have to offer them the opportunity to unsubscribe, um, and, that will satisfy the, and that will satisfy the balancing test. So you've heard it from Christine and you've heard it from James, um, that we, as far as we're aware, everything should just continue with, with uh, direct mail and it, is, it remains an opt-out channel. But you need to think about the actual statement that you're um, putting out there to actually collect the permission in the first place. How much thought actually goes into that permission statement? Um, because that is the piece of information that will enable the consumer to say, yes, I want you to send my marketing, your marketing material to me. So you spend lots of time thinking about creative, pagination, um, layout, offer, promotion and quite often you leave the statement either to the lawyer or the web host or the junior in the office but if that doesn't engage the consumer you're not going to be able to send any of these marketing communications to them so all that effort goes to waste. So there's so many different ways of um, asking permission using lots of different words um, and I've got some examples here. This one is, is circulating with a member right now um, send me posts from appropriate third parties. Now, as a consumer, really, does that engage you? Do you think, oh, yes, please, <laughs> I'm definitely going to opt in there. It doesn't say why, what you're going to get, who the third parties are, none of that. Um, so I'm not sure they really thought about the consumer when they put that statement together. There's another one that's being used at the moment. Uh, from time to time, we make portions of our mailing list available to carefully screened organisations whose products may be of interest to you. If you would prefer not to receive such mailings, please tick this box. Now, there's a bit more value add there. So they're saying, well, it's only time to time and there's only portions of our file and the companies are carefully screened and we think the products may interest you. So it's a bit more benefit-led. Um, and it's, a, it's an opt-out statement. Um, so it's assuming that that's okay. 
So you see, there, there are there's, there's opt in, there's opt out, there's legally worded statements, there's more friendly worded statements. So we just thought, right, well, we'd like to do a bit of research on this and find out um, what consumers really think. So we uh, contracted D DQM and Op4. Um, they have a product called Permission Max, which tests different permission statements with consumers. And they use uh, Taluna to send out the surveys. So we did this exercise in February, and we sent a survey with five different permission statements, some worded um, in a very uh, benefit-led way, some in a legal, legal way, some opt-in, some opt-out. And we just asked, would, would you give your permission based on this statement? We had 750 responders, um, representative of the UK um, national average, and I have the findings to present to you today, and we are, are have actually got them printed up for you as well, and each one of you will get uh, a copy of the findings on your chair uh, straight after lunch. So, well, you probably might have expected that actually there is more willingness to share with an opt-out statement than an opt-in statement. 24% more willingness to share based on the research that was, that was done. And if the statement is worded in a friendly benefit-led way, it gets 47% higher if it's an opt-out statement than a legally worded opt-in statement. That's quite significant. Really, really does make a difference. There's a difference between men and women. Now, uh, it seems that women are more inclined to opt in anyway. Um, so the difference between opt out and opt in isn't quite as marked. So 13% more willingness to um, give permission with an opt out statement, but it's still more willing. And 25% on the friendly version, as opposed to legal opt in. Men not so bothered about opting in, but actually don't mind you doing it, and so uh, less likely to opt out. Just a bit more lazy, maybe. Um, <laughs> um, so 39% um, are more willing to share with the opt-out statement, um, but if it's friendly worded, if it's benefit-led worded, 67% more likely to give their permission. And as you probably expect, there's a difference between um, young and, I wouldn't say old, because, you know, 55 plus is not that old, <laughs> but older. Um, the young people are much happier about sharing data across the board anyway, um, so the difference is not quite as significant. But again, 19% uh, more willing with the opt-out statement than in, and 38% with the friendly wording. Bigger difference on the older age group. Um, I think because they're less inclined to opt in in the first place, um, but if you give them an opt-out statement, um, they're going to be more in engaged with it. So 65% on the opt-out and 85% on the friendly wording. So it really does make a difference. So when you're thinking about uh, which approach you want to take, bear this in mind because it can have a commercial impact on your business. It's really important as well that the opt-out statement that you have is visible at the point of data collection. I know that in the past, some of you have actually put a statement in your privacy policy and have said, well, if you don't want to receive our catalogues, please write to us. That's just not going to be possible anymore. It does need to be at the point of data collection. And here's a very good example from uh, one of our members that's in the audience, so big pat on the back to them. Um, but you'll see that uh, they're asking for the name and address, and then they have their statement um, at the bottom, so it makes it very clear uh, what they would like to do with the data at the point of data collection. <coughs> yes, it's yours. <laughs> now you're all guessing, aren't you? <laughs> okay, uh, so in our guidance, um, we have an example permission statement that we worked on with uh, Rosemary Smith at Opt4. Looking at all the feedback that we got from the surveys, because we also asked for anecdotal feedback from the consumers and said, uh, you know, what do you like and what do you don't like? They didn't really like the wording uh, selected organisations, so uh, they, they, re they responded much better to trusted retailers. So um, that, that is from actual feedback from the consumers. So now, we think you'd enjoy some of the latest products and offers by Post from other trusted retailers and organisations. 
If you prefer not to receive these by post, please tick this box. Um, and then it's very important that you have more information in your privacy policy. And again, that's in the guidance, the sort of information that you need. Um, but you do need to have wording um, on profiling. Still not sure whether that needs to be at the point of data collection or whether it's in the privacy policy. But that said, one thing that we... Ha it, it is evident you don't have to say the spooky word profiling. Um, it is possible to communicate what you're doing without using that word. So our communications are designed to tell you about the benefits we can offer so that you have exclusive access to our best deals. We use information we have about you to tailor the content and try to ensure that offers are as relevant to you as possible. Um, so, you know, engaging the consumer. Now, what you can also do is you could add an extra line to say, find out more about sharing information click to watch the video. So if you were here in October, you'll remember that we talked about the fact that we wanted to make a video on your behalf that explained to the consumer the benefits of sharing data with third parties. So we made it. Um, and this video is available to any of you that want to use it and put it on your site. We did send it to uh, four or five of our members for a preview just to give us some feedback and they have already said that yes, they, they would like to put it on their site. So you can have it whenever, whenever you, it's right for you. If you don't think it's quite the, same, the right tone for your business, hopefully it'll give you inspiration to make something similar yourself. We all love getting offers from new companies through the post when they're relevant to us. But to do this, they need to know what we like. This often means sharing some basic information, such as the date we bought something and how much we spent. By understanding what we like, they can tailor deals especially for us. By allowing retailers to share your information with trusted partners, you'll get access to lots more stuff you love and less that you don't. You'll be the first to hear about exclusive deals, all relevant to you. You'll discover discounts you may have previously missed out on and recommendations for new products based on what you like. All the while saving you time by making it easy to buy the things you want. But what does this actually mean for your personal information? We know this is precious and should always be treated with special care. Whenever you provide us with personal information, we're legally bound to look after it. This means we have to make sure it's secure and treat it responsibly. Not only this, but you are totally in control and can opt out of sharing your details at any time. Sharing your information opens up a world of exciting offers, discounts and products suitable for you, helping you get more of the mail you like and less of what you don't, while keeping you in control. So we actually came up with that. Uh, the whole of Abacus um, in January got together and we had a brainstorm and said, right, we're all consumers, what do we want to hear? Um, and so all 38 of us inputted ideas onto that. Um, and then Roger Williams, our marketer extraordinaire, actually put that together. Um, so I just wanted to make one final point before I hand you over. Um, so Christine mentioned the fact that uh, in the draft consent guidance um, that uh, is asking for feedback on the 31st of March, which is tomorrow, uh, there is an element in there that says um, we might have to be specific about the types of third parties that the data is, is shared with. If that is the case, and that's confirmed in the final draft that is due out in um, May, June time, uh, then we absolutely will make sure that you have all the information uh, available to you so that a link can be put on your site so that you can comply with that regulation. But we'll, we'll keep updating you as we hear more.